Morning guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another motorhome video. Guys, the response I've had on this motorhome has been absolutely incredible. And I know so many of you have really, really enjoyed the videos. And you know, quite a few people in the comments actually pointed stuff out to me that I truly wasn't aware of. So thank you. You have pointed out to me the fact that you know, Rob, if you're going to move this on after it's done, you're going to need to get a habitation check done. I genuinely didn't know that I had to have that done. Um, a gas inspection, I kind of knew that that was on the cards, but all the time I didn't fit any gas appliances, I just assumed that that would be okay. But no, to sell it on retail, I would have to actually have a gas inspection done and a certificate. And as you know, me and Chris have got quite a lot on. We've got that Range Rover still sitting there, and that is really our long-term project. We don't want this to become another long-term project. We know that she needs a bit of welding underneath and genuinely, it's just gonna end up sitting here for the next six to 12 months and I don't want that. So what I have decided to do is go to my original plan. I've got my trade plates in there. It is all set, good to go. I'm actually gonna jump in it now and we're gonna head down to Copart and I'm actually gonna enter this through and sell it as a trade sale, the same as I bought it. That way I'm covered and I don't need to have any of those checks or anything done, that's down to the next person. So that is my plan for it. I am gonna be sad to see it go because a lot of you commented, Rob, you're getting quite attached to that and I did get quite attached to it and it's come to a point where when you get inside it, it really is a nice place to be and I really do like it. But unfortunately, this is not the one for me. So I am gonna move it on, draw my bit of money back, and then we can just continue with the projects we got and continue buying new ones. So let's get in it, head down Copart and enter it in there. We're gonna try and capture as much as we can. I'll just quickly come back in before we leave because it's quite windy out there and I wanna get this bit done. Once I get a saint in my head, I have to get it on the camera, otherwise I'll forget about it and it'll be completely different. Um, we're not sponsored by Copart, as you know, and we've got no money from them or, or nothing from them. We're not sponsored at all. But I've been in communication with them, sending a few emails and receiving them back. And I said, look, I want to enter a vehicle and I want to follow the whole process as much as I can. So just to give you guys a heads up, I have asked them if we can have some help and find out a little bit more stuff along the way and they have agreed to it so hopefully this video is really really good and shows the whole process of it which not only is it a motorhome video but it makes it interesting of how it all works as well so let's get down there and uh, get it so on guys we have just arrived at Copart and to be honest lovely all the way here I've done 46 miles now and it drove without fault. The front brake on this driver's side is quite squealy and there's not really anything that I can do about that now. And I did notice, and a couple of you are gonna notice in the video, that the temperature gauge is not actually working. Now I've never seen it rise, so we know that that's not working. The fuel gauge, however, it was on three quarters of a tank and as you can see now, it's just above half. So we know that that's working absolutely fine. But yeah, guys, I couldn't fault it. It drove down absolutely perfect. This bar did fall down from up here and just missed me, but that's my own fault. I should have put that away. But yeah, guys, now we're just waiting for this lorry to move. As you can see, sorry, I'm being careful because I've got my trade plates in the window and I don't want to show them on camera. But this lorry has actually dropped a car off the back and they're just in the process of getting that sorted out as soon as that's done we can then move in take them up the process of entering this motorhome into the copart auction as we come through the gate and it has all changed here you can see they've got a hut there there was security on the gate everything's been mapped out obviously due to what's going on in the world so they've asked us to pull up here on the left close to the barriers there in front of the gate and basically he's just calling someone now to come out and see to us. I've got, I'm gonna to have to give them all the keys, the paperwork, etc. Sorry guys, I know it's really, really windy down here and we are right on the seafront and there's not a lot I can do about it, but I'm gonna capture as much of this as I possibly can. 
but it really did drive down lovely and I can't fault it apart from that little bit of a squeal on the brake but then that is to be expected where it sat around for so long as we know it has been sat for quite a long time guys so when we initially turned up obviously they had a bit of a blockage at the gate and I was just to pull in and just park on the left just for a moment this guy's just called us over I believe his name's Jordan and he's going to basically because we're doing a private entry and I haven't done any of it before I come basically he's going to actually I have asked him and he's going to explain to us what it is that we're going to do now so basically we're going to render that privately you're going to give yep. us that and I've got to scan that do you want to explain yep. what it is we've got to okay, do so sorry basically you've got the QR code here yeah so when you come in and you want to enter the office so you have to get, scan the QR code you follow the step-by-step -step instructions that will bring you to the internet yeah. You then fill out all the information. Yeah. And then it will allow you to go in the office once you've been pointed to a queue. And then they'll invite you in. Lovely. Okay, so, so that's yours. We're sitting in the car and get that done, yeah? Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Cheers for your help. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. So guys, basically we just jumped back in the moat room and he said all you do is put your camera over that and there you go, look. The website's come up. Um I'm not sure how much of this allow. I'm not sure how much of this I am going to be able to show there is elements that I'm not going to be able to show do you know what I probably will just fill this in off camera in a minute but basically he said you're putting your first name last name telephone number the reason why you're here i.e selling a vehicle number of vehicles just the one he said then you click reserve my place in the line and that's it it's done you will then receive a text message shortly from the office inviting you in the office to complete the transaction basically to get it entered so i'll fill this in send it to them and wait for the text message to come through and then we'll cut straight back in and let you know what's next so guys instantly when i've done it it said estimated wait time one minute and it's come straight up copart hopefully none of my details are on here sorry i'm just going to have a quick look it says thanks for visiting Co copart please track your status by clicking here but we know because we've just received a message saying a Copart representative is ready to assist you. Please come into the front counter. So now we're going to head in there. I'm not sure if Chris is going to be able to film it, but of course we will try. So let's head to the office. Guys, we have just walked in. They've given us the form now to fill in. And basically, again, it's all my details and it's all the details of the vehicle. We have asked and they, you're not, they don't really all want to be recorded in here. So we're not going to show anybody's face, but I'm going to get Chris to fill that out. Um, and we probably won't film it, but you get a gist of it. They give us a form. After we've received that text message, come in, there's nobody else waiting. We've got that form, Chris is gonna fill it in, and then we'll move on to the next Guys, that's that side of the process done. All the paperwork is now done, thank you. And we gotta move outside and wait for someone to come over, take the keys from us and the logbook, and do a bit of a walk around. We've just got ourselves a nice cup of coffee. The only co-part in the country I've ever seen a coffee machine in. I'm quite happy about that. Or we're going out the wrong door now. So let's go to the next process. They've been really, really accommodating today. And it's so nice coming down. There's not really many people here. And the whole process is quite straightforward. I do hope it's making sense the way I explain it. And obviously it is a lot quicker than doing it on video. I'm just trying to capture as much of it as I can for you guys. They did say they're going to come out now. We are going to try and film a lot of it. They're going to go around.
cool process for us in rear. Yeah, it's not so he's let us feel much worse than that test. It's lucky it's so uh, not busy. Yeah. Went to, I've given them the logbook and they said right can you uh, give us the keys and I'll be honest it's a bit cheeky but because I want to show as much as I can I said look I don't really want anyone getting in with work boots on I've just had it all valeted ready to put it through the auction he went well that's not really normally what we do but if you follow us and it's those two guys there they're letting us actually drive it in so I'm quite happy about that and we get to show a bit more of it Jump out and leave the keys in it. Yeah, okay. Now the driver, uh, this guy here, he's doing the imaging and the keys, you can see he's put a big cable tie around the keys, strapped them to the, uh, around the cowling so that they can't go missing. And he's basically wandering around doing all the imaging. What he did just tell me, because it's recreational, it's a motorhome, they actually do 15 pictures. Where you normally, just for a trade sale, you get 10 pictures. Sorry, I'm trying to get out the wind there. Because it's a motorhome, they actually do 15 pictures of it. So. I can't wait to get online and obviously have a good look and see what they do look like once it's on there. Guys, we have absolutely rung the bell here today with those two guys. They've been so helpful. They've explained every process. And would you believe they've done all the imaging and I just said, is it staying here? And he said, no, it needs to go over with all the other campers and caravans. And he said, I said, well, I'd like to drive it over there. And he said, all right, well, I'll walk over there there's, there's the two yeah, guys there. Yeah. They said basically you've got to follow us and where all the uh, caravans and campers are, they're allowing us to actually take it over there. So, Chris, have a good look at all the motorbikes yeah, as we're going yeah. past. Yeah. Bit of a walk around here, guys, in this video. Well, a drive around anyway. There is a lot of gaps, but I think he said that this area now was where they say if you book it online, you're coming to collect a car. VPS. The night before, yeah, they actually bring them all over here so that they're ready for the loaders. The loaders are not driving all around the yard all day. They're literally in and out, in and out, just inside the gate. Oh, look at that boat roam there, Chris. Mm. That is a nice one. That's nearly new, isn't it? Is it a trans, eh? Good sort, alright. Oh, here we are. Forwards or backwards? Forwards or reverse? Right, lovely. I'll jump out, Rob. Okay, mate, you want to see me back? Yeah. I think there's plenty of room anyway. I think he's going to see you back. Okay.
now guys because there's this motorcycle and then the motorhome and I definitely didn't want to miss it because we've had this before haven't we I've got my fingers crossed here hopefully so, it goes up a little bit more your watch item is so here we go another bid 7-8 that was two bids there wasn't it Seven, seven, nine, eight thousand pounds. Eight one. It's taken a little while to update here, but I've got the phone in the background because it's more live. Bonus time. Yeah, current bid eight thousand one hundred. Bonus time. Can we get one more bid on it? Be nice. Sold there, yeah, eight thousand one hundred pounds. Just quickly before we get into the numbers, I know a lot of you are going to be watching this video and commenting now, saying, "Rob, why didn't you offer it to me? And how comes you never put a link in the description, etc., etc." So I do quickly want to get that out of the way, guys. That motorhome was not good enough to retail sell, and I personally did not feel comfortable selling it at all. So. We, it's best to let it go through the trade and then the next person can do the jobs on it and they can make it available. But the habitation check, the gas check, MOT in it, doing the welding, I just didn't have time. And I would not sell a vehicle like that, as all of you know. I just don't do it. It has to be absolutely bang on 100%. So that is the reason why we went down the Copart route. And just to add as well, Obviously, you know, we cannot buy anything down the auction. Everything is making really, really strong money. So we decided, do you know what? If we can't beat them, let's join them. Let's put the motorhome down there, put it through the auction. Hopefully, it makes good money and makes really, really good content. So that's the reason why we took it that down there. quite exciting watching that auction. And we have actually been bidding today. We've bid on quite a lot of cars and, again, couldn't get near nothing. We're going to have to have a... A second think we've started looking a lot further afield so do a bit more traveling to go and get them maybe and also i've signed up to another auction site so fingers crossed we can get something but the moat roam is now sold and it's gone so let's get down to the numbers the motorhome guys i've told quite a few of you in the comments but a lot of people did ask where did i get it how did i find it it was nothing in particular i found it on ebay and it was advertised for 4350. I rung and rung and rung the guy because I didn't buy that motorhome to flip it. I didn't buy it to, I wanted to keep that motorhome for me and my missus to go away in and just, I thought it's worth the money if I can do a few little jobs to it. And the advert I've actually got, and I could read it back to you. And it says that it run and drove lovely and it needed tidying up and it needed some furniture inside. There was no mention of the fact that it didn't run because clearly it didn't run when it arrived. So I tried negotiating the price with the guy. It would be rude not to. And he said, mate, it's £4,350 or we'd just end the conversation, basically. He said, my phone has rung off the hook. You sound serious. If you want it, that's how much it is. I said, send me your bank details. I transferred him every penny of the money. So I took a big, big risk. I then found a lorry driver with a 15 tonne lorry, plant lorry, to go and collect it for me on Father's Day. And it was £550. It was a long way away and I couldn't get no one else to do it any cheaper. I tried Shipley. I put out an Instagram post, spoke to in excess of 30 different recovery guys and that was the best I could do. So once we got it back here, we started the process of getting it running. So injector testing, it was, to be honest, the guy said, oh, I can't really charge you, but I'm not like that, and I'd love to use that guy again. So I gave him a 20 pound drink for doing it. Fresh diesel, Chris said, you know, we don't know what's in there. And by the looks of it, it has sat for a long, long time. So we put 50 pounds worth of diesel in it. 
Of course, you see the state of the timing belt kit, so I bought a complete service kit for it. Timing belt, oil, oil filter, air filter, and diesel filter. And we've done all of that, and that comes to 150 pound. The power steering pipe, obviously I had to buy a whole coil of it, and that comes to 20 pounds. The two windows I bought on eBay, and they was both the same size for the side and the back. And they was 120 pound for the pair, which was an absolute bargain because I did panic when I see the comments in the first video and everyone said, you wait till you see the price of those windows. And those windows, I got Chris to measure them up, they fitted perfect. And they're all on there properly and all sealed. Um, cleaning products was actually 25 pounds. And you know why, it, it was filthy. Um, I can see we have missed a little thing off of here, but I'll just add it to the end price. And that was 10 pounds for the bit of dry cleaning at Morrison's. Um, the carpet, the man in the carpet shop, 15 pounds, which was again, brilliant for that. The battery I got round at Kent Auto Salvage for 15 pounds. Um, the awning, there's a bit of a story to that awning I'm not gonna get into, but uh, yeah, let's not even get into it. It was missing when it arrived. And I had a bit of a sulk about it, I'll be honest, when one of my friends rang me up and said, oh, what are you up to? And I went, well, this has turned up and the awning's been nicked off of it. And he said, well, don't panic. I've, you know I've done a lot of motocross vans. I've got one there, mate. Go and see what you want. And I turned up and he actually had three there. And that was the correct size and almost identical to what come off. And he said, Rob, just get 40 quid drink for it. I'm not going to use it. So I'll give 40 pound for that awning, which that, I know, I live in the real world. I know you can't go and buy that awning for 40 pound. And I know, you, you know, some of you guys will say, yeah, well, you was lucky there. And I absolutely agree. I couldn't go and buy that ever again for that money. So I'm lucky there. The last window, me and Chris went down to that caravan breakers. We was a bit disappointed when we got there because he had a lot of stuff advertised, but as it turned out, he had three caravans in his yard when we got there. But we got the last window and it was 60 pounds. Copart fee for entering the vehicle was 99 pound and the reserve fee, which I did put on there because I didn't want to sell it for any less than 5,000 pounds because I'd roughly had it in my head, that's what it owed me. But actually, that was 15 pound for the reserve. And after Chris worked it out, which was 10 minutes ago, I actually realized that it does owe me 5,534 pound. Let's round that up to 5,550 because of the laundry and stuff. So the selling price was 8,100 pounds. So a pre-tax profit of 2,560 pound. Now guys, I'm happy with a profit. I am over the moon with a profit. It's, you don't get that profit every day and you certainly don't get it out of most cars. But there is still an element of, I would have loved to have kept that motor home. But you know, that day when we done the service and Chris said she does want a bit of welding and we haven't got time for it. So many of you are always saying, Rob, how long on the LSE? How long on the LSE? And guys, that's a bit of welding. We have not got time to get stuck in under that camper van. The other thing I wanted to mention, a couple of people said, oh, I've guessed what you paid for that and you, you're really having it off. And I hope that shows that I did give a lot of money for that. And also, I took a massive, massive risk when I bought that motorhome because I'd never seen it and I didn't know anything about it. I took a punt and by this it's paid off a little bit. But at 8,100 pounds, someone is gonna spend a few pounds getting that up to scratch and about right. But guys, look on eBay. The cheapest one of those motorhomes available that I found in the last two days I checked, there was the same model on there on an R Ridge, exactly the same motorhome, done 70,000, very nice and clean, but very dated, 15,995 pounds. I've also seen one other W Ridge, which was the same as mine, and it did have 44,000 miles on it, and it was 21,000 pounds. So I do believe once that's pulled together, 
that is a £15,000 moat rhyme. So although I've made a nice little profit out of it, I think I've left enough in it for the next man at that money. If they've got to spend £1,500 on it, maybe two grand, getting it absolutely spot on. What a lovely thing to have for that money. And again, a shame we didn't have the time to do it. Guys, I'm getting carried away, I'm waffling on. I've got a lot more to say, but the video is already too long and I'm sure you're bored of it already. So don't forget, please like, subscribe and share and we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.